Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe that God's on time? Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I doubt that uh, many people in this area know what has been here this week. Amen. People that want to go to heaven can't make it without the type of ministry that we've had in this pulpit this week. Praise God. Amen. We have uh, been accused of having a pep rally. Well, if that's what it is, I like it. It made me feel pretty peppy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God, thank God. We're so honored and blessed to have Brother Ellie Westberg from Junction City, Kansas. He pastors a very large church. He is district superintendent, and he's traveling all over the country preaching. I thank God for this man of God that has dedicated his life to preaching truth and bringing light to a dark world. Praise God! Praise God! If you think you can go to heaven without the plan of salvation, if you think you can go to heaven without the doctrine of oneness, if you think you can go to heaven without holiness, you are in the wrong place tonight. And you're going to be listening to the wrong man. Come on, Brother Westford. Are you glad that he's here to preach to us tonight? Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Ah, glory to God, glory to God. Ah, mm-hmm. Oh, my, 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 my. Feeling good. Feeling good tonight. May be seated, if you will. I'd like to give honor to Brother. Now, now, when people say all those nice things about you, uh, I copied this from Brother Travis. Uh, when people are loading all those nice remarks on you, it's like chewing gum. It tastes good, but don't swallow it. it tastes good, but don't swallow it. When you swallow your gum, it's going to produce some very, very stringent reactions in your body. So don't swallow the gum. Just taste it. It tastes good, but don't swallow it. I'd like to give honor to the pastor of this church, Brother Burgess, the fine lady that married two old friends many, many years. I told Brother Herod, I said, it's been a long time. Remind me of a young couple that got married and bought a water bed and drifted apart. Uh, we sort of drifted apart the past few years, but we've renewed some relationships. They're sweet people, they're gracious people. And if I lived anywhere near Carthage, Mississippi, I'd be a member of this church. And Brother Burgess would be my pastor. Uh, I'd like to give honor to the ministering brethren that are here tonight. I feel that you came to honor Brother Burgess, but I will do my best uh, if I can tonight. Uh, I've got a weak little old Baptist message here. Uh, might try to expound and exhort a little in a few minutes. And so good to be with Brother Hare. It just seemed like I was going to run into Brother Hare. And uh, I, I like that. I like that. I like it. I like it. I, 
I, I, I'm just getting better acquainted with Brother Hare, and I like I like what I feel. Now, y'all have been so good to me. The first night, usually going somewhere, it's get acquainted one night, and folks is out there weighing you, looking you over, and, and they're sitting there in judgment. And uh, I told you the first night, you were looking at me and wondering if I can preach. And I'm looking at you wondering how much preaching you can stand. And I think you can stand a real good bunch of preaching. I think you can. I, I preached in Puerto Rico last August, I believe it was, three nights. And then I dedicated the church we built in Aguas Buenas. Aguas Buenas means good water. And Sister Westberg and I are right in the middle of this town named Aguas Buenas, good water. And she said, I wonder if the water is fit to drink. I said, I said, woman, that's the name of the town, good water. <laughs> Lord, but uh, the first night, now, I, I took two Spanish families with me to do the translating. Brother Melendez and Brother Rodriguez and their wives and children. And the first night, uh, they, was, they was weighing me. They was weighing me, you know. And the second night, man, they got with me. And the third night, they would have followed me over the cliff. Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, I believe, could be a strong conservative uh, district. Wouldn't take too much to be a strong conservative district. Lovely, lovely, lovely people. Uh, and, and you have been so good to me. I, uh, oh, that, uh, that pork chops and rice and gravy this afternoon, that'd make you kiss your mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. And, and, and the fruit, and the fruit in my room, and now I gotta go back home, go to work tomorrow. Uh, I've been here just relaxed and laid back, having a good time, now I gotta go home, go to work. Wife said everything was good at home. I talked to the sweet little thing this afternoon. She said, unbelievably quiet. Well, I, I, I like that. Got a lady that's dying of cancer. I worried about being able to come here because she is, she is very, very sick. Now, you've been so gracious and kind, and uh, I, uh, I, uh, uh, I, I, I tried tried to preach what God gave me, and I, I can't get away from this. I can't get away from it. So I, uh, I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to expound a little while. Uh, Abedos, Hebrews, Capitulo Dose, chapter 12, for our scripture reading. Verso Dios, Diciocho. That's verse 18. Verse O D S B O T O. Verse 18 for our scripture reading tonight. I know just enough Spanish to be dangerous. I was preaching in Mannheim, Germany, and there was a there was an old boy from Columbia, South America, there. And now, if if you want to say sweet things to your wife, you say "Mi cariño." That's my darling. And then, if you really want to get Honey dripping, you see, me dulce corazón. That's my sweetheart. And this old boy called his wife Mama Sita. So I come home and I'm in the pulpit. And I turn to my wife and I said, Mama Sita. And oh, them Spanish folks come up all day. They come around. Oh, Brother Westbrook, don't call her that. Don't call her that. Puerto Rico and Panama and Honduras and El Salvador, Dominican Republic, they're from everywhere. Oh, please. And finally, finally they had a conference, and they come to me and said, Well, uh, it might be all right. But the connotation was red hot mama. That's what I was calling her. <laughs> mama Sita. So, I know just enough Spanish to be dangerous tonight. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, it's good to be here. Lovely, lovely folks. I'm going to miss you. And uh, I, I thank you again for your kindness and your 
uh, your attention that you have displayed. This old ugly preacher, you just made me feel real good. Now, Hebrews 12 and 18, For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through the dart of so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Sinai, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not, who refused him that spake on earth? Much more shall not we escape. We turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. You may be seated tonight. Writer of Hebrews carried them back to Sinai. There is a comparison of the two mountains, Mount Sinai and Mount Zion, or the church of the living God. God brought them out of Egypt. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 Verse 1, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. You're slow, Brother Joel. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that all our fathers. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. Under the cloud. That's and all spirit. Following the spirit, like I preached the other night. All of our fathers were under the cloud. And all passed through, passed the, sea. through the sea. And we're all baptized into Moses and in the cloud. And we're baptized unto Moses in the cloud. And in the sea. And in the sea. And did eat the same, all eat and the same spiritual meat. ate the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same and spiritual drink. And they drank of that rock that followed them. Followed them and that, that rock, rock was Christ. Christ. Now he's, he's talking about shiny eyes. This was a people with a slave mentality. They had been slaves in Egypt for so long, so long. And they really didn't want to leave. Moses, Moses and God had to work on them and finally brought them out. And our gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We die with Him in repentance. We're buried with Him in water, baptism, and we... Arise, resurrected by the power of the Holy Ghost, to walk in the newness of life. Our gospel. But he brought them out of Egypt and brought them down through that Red Sea of water baptism. And then he brought them out to Sinai. And he brought us to our own personal Sinai when that Spirit came down on us. And the, 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 the voice that came out of the cloud came out of our mouth as we were speaking in other tongues. And he brought them back to that time in Sinai. But he said, now, now we are come to a, a, a different mountain. On, uh, on Sinai, God, uh, uh, the voice of God came out of the cloud. God wrote his, on the tables of stone with his finger, giving us ten commandments. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. Uh, giving us ten commandments. Now, I want you to understand they're not recommendations. They are not suggestions. They are commandments. I can't hardly stand our manual that says, We recommend, we recommend, we recommend, we recommend. Recommend is junk. God said, I, 
said the commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Ah, they're, they are not negotiable. They're not negotiable. Oh, listen, read, read, read. He that despised he Moses' that law, despised Moses' law, died without died, mercy. Died without mercy. Under two or three my witnesses. God, my God, the commandments are serious. You're going to die without mercy. They found this old boy out there picking up sticks on the Sabbath. And they came to, uh, caught him, and they brought him to Moses and said, What shall we do? Uh, now, now, Moses said, I don't know. I don't know what God wants. We'll, we'll just put him in the, incar- incarcerate him. We'll incarcerate him. <laughs> I've been, I pastor a lot of folks that used to be incarcerated. <laughs> I, I, I was telling, I was telling Brother, uh, Brother uh, Burgess about this afternoon. When I first went to Junction City, had a little old barracks building down on the corner of 12th and Eisenhower, and three uh, voting members voted me in, and God began to bless us. And in my little old cubby hole of an office, I had a little old 110 air conditioner. And, uh, oh, I needed that thing so bad that it's just one of them you plug in the wall, you know, just a little old one lung, 110, and, and, and somebody stole it. I said, my God... Somebody stealing my arrow. Oh, I was fussed. I was fussed. Twenty years went by. Then an old boy prayed through. He had the Holy Ghost about three months, and he come in my office. Twenty years later, he said, Brother Westberg, he said, Do you remember that air conditioner? I said, Yeah. He said, I stole it. My God, heroin mainliner been to prison. His wife work the streets. Oh, but, uh, oh, now, now, it, it, it don't matter where you come from or what you've done or what you've been, the blood of Jesus Christ and the mercy of God can set you free and God can fill you full of the Holy Ghost. It don't matter. It does not matter. My God, God is no respecter of persons. Clip that on your mind. He is no respecter of persons. My God, my God! Now, now, uh, uh, they, uh, they 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 got him out of Egypt, and 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 and, and, and they, they 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 put this old boy. Now I come back and picked it up. Now I come back and picked it up. Old preachers never die; they just lose their text and wander. But I come back and picked it up. They found this old boy picking up sticks. See, see, see! I told you I'd come back and pick it up. They found this old boy picking up sticks. They said, what do we do with him? They, they incarcerated him. They, incarcer- they put him in jail. And Moses went to God and God said, stone that dude. <laughs> Take him outside the camp and kill him. Boy, I can hear the love preacher getting all upset. Oh, my God. All he was doing was picking up sticks, picking up sticks. No! He broke the commandments of God. Hey, it's not just picking up sticks. We're talking about the commandments of God. <laughs> he that despised Moses' law died without mercy. Now, now, some people have this salad bar mentality toward the Word of God. Boy, that nugget's got a good salad bar. You going to take me back there before I go home? That's a good salad bar. Oh, I like that salad bar. Mmm. But some folks have a salad bar mentality when it comes to the Word of God. Now give me a little of this and a little of that and some of this. I don't want none of that. Load my plate with love and mercy and grace. But don't give me any of that legalism. They got a salad bar mentality when it comes to the Word of God. And their approach to God has got that salad bar mentality. My God, have mercy. Brother Joe, give me uh, 1 John 4 and 8. Now, this is the love preacher. This is the love preacher. You know who the love preacher is? The love preacher is the Apostle John. Sitting there uh, with his head on Jesus' breast. Peter got jealous. And uh, Jesus said, mind your own business. Uh, if he tarried till I come, just get on with your business. 
and leave John and I alone. But here's what John wrote. Read, read, read. He that loveth not, he that loveth not, knoweth not God. Knoweth not God. For God is love. For God is love. <laughs> but give me First John two and four. Let's listen to what this love preacher said. This is real, genuine love. Hold that just a minute. Now, I, I'm going to tell you, I love my wife. <laughs> I love my wife. I love that woman. And and God loves the church. That's His bride. But my love for my wife uh, does not... Uh, it, it does not allow her to walk down the street float, uh, flirting with every old dude that comes down the sidewalk with his shirt unbuttoned and all three hairs on his chest sticking straight out. Uh, and when my wife gets to look at it, I say, hey, baby, don't, don't, don't look at that dude. Uh, my love does not allow her to be flirting with every cat coming down the sidewalk. Uh, and my, my, my love demands that, that she turn her entire attention toward me. And uh, I, I know I'm ugly, but she thinks I'm handsome, and don't nobody ever tell her any different. She thinks so. Uh, she thinks I'm good looking. Uh, I know she's often false doctrine. She's under a strong delusion. But just leave that woman alone now. Oh, my, my, my love for her demands that she uh, sew my buttons and cook my meals and pat me on the cheek. And I don't. Hey, the Church of the Living God should not be flirting with the world. Their attention should be on God. All of their love should be directed toward the bridegroom, the bridegroom. Uh, oh, my God, have mercy. That pseudo-love. Oh, that real genuine love. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. But read, read, read. Now, now, here is real love. He that saith, I know him. He that saith, I know him. And keepeth not his commandment. And keepeth not his commandment. Is a lie. Is a lie. And the truth is not in him. Oh, he that saith, I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. Is a lie. And the truth is not in him. So the New Testament commandments uh, are more stringent than the Old Testament commandments. Give me that Hebrews 10 and 28 again. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. And are two or three witnesses. Right. Read, read, read. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Read, read, read. Of how much sore punishment... Of how much sore punishment... Suppose ye... Suppose ye... Shall he be thought worthy... Shall he be thought worthy... Who hath trodden underfoot trodden the Son of God... Underfoot the Son of God... And hath counted the blood God. of the covenant... Oh, you ignore the New Testament commandments. You're in worse shape than they were in the Old Testament. Now we need to find out what those New Testament commandments really are. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's John 14 and 15. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, they say we don't want any legalism. I'm going to tell you, God is a legalist. John said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, but there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is a book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things that was written in the book according to their works. And if you wasn't found written in the book of life, you went to the lake of fire. God is a legalist. It's the book or the fire. The book or the fire. God is a legalist. And He didn't give us ten suggestions. He did not give us ten recommendations. He gave us ten commandments. Now, the New Testament commandments. Acts 1 and 1. Luke, the Gospel of Luke. Ah, this is Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke. He said, The former treatise have I written, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus... I'll go back and read the other part. The former treatise, treatise have I made, written, O Theophilus, Theophilus of all, all that, that Jesus, Jesus began, began to do, to do and, and teach. to teach. 
until, until the day in which he was, he was taken, taken up. up. After that, he After through the that, Holy Ghost. He what? He through the Holy Ghost. After that, he what? Had given commandment. Oh! After that, he through the Holy Ghost gave commandment unto the apostles through the apostles that he had chosen. Oh! You know those that have such a casual approach to the Word of God. Every time an apostle opened his mouth, it was commandments that came out. The first apostle that ever gave a commandment was on the day of Pentecost when they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. You shall receive the Holy Ghost. That's a commandment. That's a commandment. That is not negotiable. That is not negotiable. That is not a recommendation. It is not a suggestion. It's a commandment. A commandment. You ignore that commandment, you die without mercy. You die without mercy. Now, the Word of God, 1 Peter 1, 16, said, Peter is taking them back to when they were with him in the Holy Mount. He's taking them back to the Mount of transfiguration. Read for the Job. Because it is written, Be ye holy. No, 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 no. Second. Uh, uh, First Peter 1, 16. Oh, uh, my, my, my. Second Peter. Second Peter. Let's try that. Second Peter 1, Second Peter 1, 16. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. We what? For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We have not followed fables. cunningly devised fables. When we made known... Hey, this is pilots. not a bunch of fairy stories. This is not a bunch of kindergarten stories. Peter said we have not followed cunningly devised fables. Read, read, read. When we made known unto you the when power we and coming of our Lord made Jesus known Christ, unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus but Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of His majesty. But we were eyewitnesses of His majesty. Read, read, read. For He received from God the Father he honor and glory. Received from God the Father honor and glory. Where there came such a voice when to there Him. Came a voice to Him from the excellent glory. From the excellent glory. This is my beloved this Son. This is my beloved Son, in whom I whom am well, I am well pleased. pleased. Now listen to this. And and this voice which came from heaven this we heard. Voice which came from heaven we heard when, when we, we were, were with him in the in holy, the holy mount. mount. Read on. We have also a more we sure word have of prophecy. Also a more sure word of prophecy. This is more sure than the voice that came from heaven. Let me tell you, I said this is more sure than the voice that came from heaven. You with your salad bar mentality, your casual approach to the Word of God, this has a more sure word of prophecy than the voice that came audibly from heaven! Read, read, read. Where unto you, where unto ye do well that ye take heed. You need to take heed. As unto a light that, as shines, unto a light in a that shines in a dark place. Until the day don't. My God. The day don't. My God. The New Testament commandments. Despised Moses' law. They died without mercy under two or three witnesses. The New Testament commandments. Uh, give me... 1 Corinthians 14, 37. Now, if anybody think himself to be spiritual, anybody here think they're spiritual? Oh, if read, any read, man read. think himself to be a prophet uh, or spiritual, if he thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge Paul that said, the things. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you. I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Are what? The commandments of the Lord. Are what? The commandments of the Lord. Are what? The commandments. The of things the Lord. that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Yeah. When that apostle picked up his pen 
to right, the voice that thundered from Shinai flowed through the pen of the prophet. My God, my God, my God. Things written in Corinthians are the commandments of the Lord. You with your salad bar mentality, that's coming directly from the throne of grace. Uh, I'm sick to my gut of this modern apostolic movement. I'm gut sick. I could vomit when I see and hear. No. I told you last night, the first thing the devil done, he convinced Eve that the Word of God was not true and God really did not mean what he said. He has got this apostolic bunch convinced that the Word of God is not true and God doesn't mean what he said. Take what you want and leave what you don't like. Just take what you want and leave what you don't like. If you don't like it, don't believe it. I had a fellow tell me one time, he said, oh, I don't believe that. I said, God ain't going to go off and have a nervous breakdown just because you don't believe it. Big deal. He don't believe it. I mean, that settles everything. Settles his destination. You better believe that. You're going to hell. That's the only thing we really got. Is that book right there? I'm telling you, if you don't have truth, you're hell bound, friend. There's no other way. There ain't no second train coming either. I got me a sermon in De Quincey. Years ago, Brother Harris, I knew De Quincey, Louisiana, like the back of my hand. So, you come through the blinker light, the soft cream stand on the right, it's not there anymore. You go on down, makes a sharp turn, there's a railroad track. It seemed like the devil held them trains back until I got there. And I wheeled around. One night, there's a long freight train. I just, boy, I was sleepy. I set the air on that 18 wheeler, clamped that trailer air down, and I just fell on the steering wheel. Dozing, just half asleep and half awake. I used to run three trips a week, Houston to New Orleans, and sometimes through the Quincy and, I don't know, New Orleans. Oh, God. I'm praying for you, brother. I spent 17 years running into that city. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus, help him. Help him, God. Touch him. Give him a divine anointing. But I, I come around, there's that freight train. I just dropped my head. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm dozing and waking and dozing. And pretty soon I heard that, I heard that clicking begin to pick up speed. Click, 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 click. Begin to pick up speed. And I thought, well, we're coming to the end of the train. I lifted up my head, and a man walked out there with a lantern in his hand. He was a switchman. And I knew, I knew what he was going to do. He was going to catch that last car, the caboose. He was going to catch that last car. But the train was picking up speed. It was picking up speed faster and faster, and suddenly, I was wide awake. I began to wonder, is that dude going to catch that car or not? That train's picking up speed. It's, it's going. Pretty soon, I see that little green light coming down the track. That's the caboose. And I watched him. He had the lantern in his right hand. He had that left hand ready. He, he had that foot ready. And as that caboose come by, he stepped up on that step, and he grabbed that rail, and it slammed his body around. But he hung on. He made the train. Hey, the last car is coming through. 
You better grab the last car because it's coming through. There ain't going to be no other train. This is it. You better get in this with all of your heart, friend. You better kick all of your uh, everything aside and get in here and live for God and believe that Bible and obey the Bible because there ain't going to be no other train. Them charismatics are funny. They're a joke. They're following that other spirit. They can shout and jingle their ear bobs and flop that short hair around and smile through them painted lips. They're as hellbound as Hitler. I said they're following another spirit. It's not the spirit of God. It's another spirit. Don't let them charismatics fool you, honey. Turn your back on them and let them go to hell and get in a real church that believes the Word of God. I got in trouble preaching this, Brother Burgess. So I'm going to preach it just for your sake tonight. You ask me. Now, I drove an 18-wheeler 23 years. 17 of them through Louisiana. And uh, most of them on two-lane highways. And you, you know, an 18-wheeler, you're setting up high. The engine's under you, beside you. If you want a real thrill, meet a woman on a narrow bridge and look down through the windshield and see her face. Ooh. It'll make you want to snatch your feet up on the engine, engine cover. Ooh. And my eyes about that big around. She's clenching that steering wheel. She's leaving fingerprints in it. She's so scared, she's dangerous. She's dangerous. But anyway, coming down the two lane highway, you know, big and noisy, and them dogs, them dogs, they'd wait on you up on the porch, laying on the porch. All of a sudden, they'd lift up their head, you know, and they'd hear that 18 wheeler coming, they'd run down there. They'd run down there to the road, and they'd stand there. They'd stand there. You come by, they'd run out barking at your wheels, snapping at your wheels, barking at your wheels. I ain't never been dog bit yet. sitting up high. But every little once in a while I'd hear a pop. And look in my rear view mirror, there's a dog writhing and twisting and dying. Now, I don't like to kill dogs. I love dogs. I love dogs. I don't want to kill dogs. I don't get no chick charge out of killing dogs. But, if you think I'm going to put a hundred thousand dollars worth of tractor and a trailer and a half a million dollars worth of cargo in the ditch to avoid a barking dog. You're wrong. I ain't slowing down. I ain't swerving the rig. Let the dogs watch out. Let the dogs watch out. Hey, I ain't never been dog bit. Yet, let the dogs bark. The truck has got to roll. Let the truck roll and let the dogs bark. I know where I come from. I know where I'm going. I got my orders from the dispatcher. There's a time clock taken away down there. I know where I come from. I know where I'm going. Let the dogs bark and let the truck roll. Now, do you understand anybody getting angry about that? I can't understand anybody getting angry about that. Huh? I'm driving the truck. <laughs> they can dodge them dogs if they want to. 
Now, back to the commandments. When uh, the apostle wrote, you read it a while ago, First Peter uh, 1 and 15. He said, 16 says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That is a command. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Read it, read. Because it is written. Because it is written. Be ye holy, be for ye I am holy. Holy, for I am holy. That is not a suggestion. It is not a recommendation. It is not negotiable. Be ye holy, for I am holy. That is a New Testament commandment. And you ignore the commandments, you'll die without mercy. You'll die without mercy. Wearing gold. Peter said the wearing of gold. Brother Ike Terry said, now the question is, can a woman put a gold ring on her finger and not be wearing gold? Huh? I know that's not grammatically correct, but you understood what I said, didn't you? Huh? Huh? My God, used to be you stick one in your ear, it was jewelry, not anymore. Used to be, if you hung it around your neck, it was jewelry. Not anymore. Because they didn't pull it out by the root. That root was the little thing on that left finger. And they didn't pull it out by the root, so it, it's grown all over the place. But wearing gold is still wearing gold. Exodus, Exodus 33 and 5. God got him out of Egypt. My God, I feel like I need to preach that a little while. God got them out of Egypt. Now Aaron got their ear bobs down there at Sinai. He got their ear bobs. That's good. That's good. But then God got them out to Horeb. Read, read, read. For the Lord had said unto Moses, And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, You tell him, children are, of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. You are a stiff-necked people. You hear me? I said, You are a stiff-necked people. Oh, not me. Not, yeah, you are too. You're a stiff-necked people, God said. Read, read, read. I will come up into the midst of thee in I'm a moment. Come up in the midst of you in a moment. And consume and thee. And consume you. Therefore now put off thy ornaments put from thee. Put off thy ornaments from thee. That I may know what to do unto thee. Lay me. all that trash down so I know what to do with you. I had a German woman come to church in Sunday school one Sunday morning. She was wearing pants. She come back Sunday night. She's wearing a dress. She said, I want to talk to you in the office. I said, okay. I come in there. Her and her husband sitting there. She said, I come this morning. And I looked around. And I was the only one who didn't have a dress on. So she said, I bought this dress and I came back tonight. She said, then I looked around and there was nobody in here wearing any rings or jewelry. And she said, I pulled all of mine off and put it in the offering pan. And she said, now I'm sitting here and everybody else's sleeves are down to here, and mine are up here. And she said, I need to cover up them tattoos on my arm anyhow. Never heard it preached. Never heard it taught. Never been in a Bible study. Just came in and felt the Spirit of God and lined up. My God, there's a stiff-necked people around. They will say chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. My God, be ye holy for I am holy. Oh, I can't stay on that any longer. Get that rotten jewelry off of you. Get it out of your hair. Get it off your clothes. Oh, what Brother Terry used to say, if you don't get it off, it'll burn off in hell. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Well, let's go on. Oh, 1 Timothy 2 and 8. 
I would that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands. Oh, I wish. I would that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Oh, I wish they would. Read, read, read it. I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And in like manner. And in like manner also. Also. That means the women ought to do the same thing as the men do. Right. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Women adorn, them, adorn themselves in modest apparel. With shame facedness. Shame facedness. Hold it. Hold it. I had some old boy said, he said, Oh God, I don't know whether I dare say this or not. I said it. I said it in Beaumont. I said it in Lunida. But I better not say it here. I better not say it. Better not. Better not. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say it. No, I ain't going to say it. Uh, at home, I'll say, shall I say it again? They'll say, say it again. I'll say, if you're not out looking for a job, I'm going to pray that them food stamps rot your belly out. <laughs> they say, say it again, say it again. Say it, Brother Westberg, say it. And then I say, right. They say, right, 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 right. Now when I say right, you're supposed to say right. Right? 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 All right. One man said it's right, but it's tight. <laughs> oh, it's right, but it's tight. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I, I got to go on now. My God. I took them boys, I told you, up to the, up to the upper peninsula in Michigan with me first week of February. And, and one of them's an ex-captain. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, one works civil service. And they, they decided they're going to come up there with me and see what I was doing up there at that men's retreat. And, oh, God, the first time, I told you, I walked in there, and here's this big old boy with a ponytail and a Fu Manchu beard. And I said, who's that, Brother Crider? He said, oh, he said, that's a reprobate backslider. Oh, don't, don't, don't write him off. You list. I looked at that old boy. I felt something. He, he was an Indian. We was right in the middle of the reservation. He was an Indian. And I looked at that old boy, and, and something, something just turned over in me. And I, I watched him. The Word of God was going home to that old boy. He, he, he didn't have me shut out. Uh, he walked in there Sunday morning and that beard was gone and the ponytail was cut off and he hit that altar and he went to praying. And all Sunday night he got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and really got a job in the baptistry. He really went to talking in tongues. Don't ever write anybody off. Don't ever write anybody off. Yeah. I ought to tell you about Bobby. Did I tell him about Bobby's mama over there the other night? Bobby, Bobby's daddy was black and his mama was Japanese. That makes him half black and half Japanese. And he had, there was eight of them, one girl, seven boys. Four of them got the Holy Ghost. And that Buddhist woman hated me. She didn't believe in God. She hated me. That Buddhist woman hated me. And she finally pulled three of them boys out. And the girl put the girl back on the street hustling. And here, Bobby is left. And the woman got cancer. And Bobby comes in, Mama's got cancer. I said, good. In my heart, I said, good. That heifer needs to die. No mercy. No compassion. Let that heifer die. That's the way I felt. And Bobby come and said, pray for Mama. Finally went over there and prayed for her. I said, oh, it was, I was a hip Oh, I'm a hypocrite. I said, oh God, heal this woman. I didn't, I don't want the God to heal that woman. Let her die. Let her go to hell. Oh, I'm carnal sometimes. Carnal is a dog. I didn't want God to heal that woman. I want her to go to hell. And she got bad. She's out there in the ICU, intensive care, in the, the hospital out there at Fort Riley. And I went out there and prayed for her. She's in intensive care. Tubes and, and needles going in her all over. And, I laid my hand. I said, "Oh God, heal it!" I didn't want. I didn't want God to heal that woman. Let her go to hell. And Bobby come. He said, "Brother Westberg, Mama's been clinically dead for fourteen days, and they want to unhook her. What'll I do? I want to say unhook her. 
I said, Bobby, that's your decision. The rest of it, she said. She said, I died. And a voice said, you're not ready. She said, I called on Buddha. And Buddha did not answer me. I called on Jesus. And I came back to life. She said, hey, she come out of the hospital. And I can still see her coming down that aisle. Dragging that leg. Dragging that leg. That flap ugly oriental face standing there in front of the altar laid my hands on her God uh, touched her she prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost Uh, two men carried her down in the baptistry three months later I preached her funeral that woman died full of the Holy Ghost the mercy the mercy of God the mercy of God the mercy of God Oh, now back to the shamefacedness. Said, dress modestly. Is that what it do say? Adorn themselves in modest apparel. Adorn themselves in modest apparel. I don't know why God hates nakedness. I can't explain everything God puts in that book. But God hates nakedness. The first thing He done... He killed animals and clothed Adam and Eve. The word in the Hebrew, clothed, means from wrist to neck to ankle. I mean, he covered their ugly bodies up. And here, old Ham come in there, saw his dad drunk and naked. And <laughs> Ham, Shem, and Japheth backed in. And God said, I'm going to curse Ham for looking on his father's nakedness. God hates nakedness. The first thing that when he got the legion, he got the devils out of legion. The man was sitting there in his right mind and fully clothed. God loves people to wear clothes and he hates nakedness. I don't know why he does, but he does. I told him in Puerto Rico, I said, I've watched. The farther people get away from God, the more clothes they take off. Go down to the topless bar. The more farther they get away from God, the more they'll take off. The closer they get to God, the more clothes they'll put on. The more they'll cover up their ugly body. God hates nakedness. Dress in modesty. That means men too. Don't seem like men have as much trouble with it as women, but it means men too. And then it says shamefacedness. That means with a clean face. Man said you don't have no scripture against mustaches and beards. Read that again, honey. Clean facedness. We don't want a woman sticking lipstick on. We don't want that green eye shadow. We don't want that pancake mess. We don't want none of that. We want her to be clean facing. All right, the men ought to be clean facing too. Get that mustache off your face. Get that beard off your face. Ah, God, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it. There's two ways you can tell when a black man's got the Holy Ghost. You get him out of them sports and get that mustache over his face, you can believe he got the Holy Ghost. If you can get him out of sports, sports is idolatry. I said sports is idolatry. My God, they knew who's playing who and who's doing this and who's doing that and who's playing who and who's doing this and the cockroaches are playing the canaries on Saturday afternoon and all America worries about who's playing who and have I got enough money for a six-pack to watch the game and America's going down the train and all they got their mind on is who's playing who on Saturday. My God, who cares who's playing who? Let's get into the book. Let's save our soul. Uh, 
I preach in one place. I said, I can show you a hundred black men with no mustache. I went home and counted them. I made a mistake. There's only 90-something. I messed up. Oh, now, sports. I ought to hit that another lick. They know who's playing who. America. Every world power has gone down the drain over two things. The Babylonian Empire, the Grecian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, the Roman Empire. Where do you think the Olympics come from? Every one of these empires that went down the drain were caught up in two things sports and perverted sex. And America, you're on your way. I love you, America, but you're on your way. I love this country. I went over in World War II and fought for it. I heard on the radio one time said these old geezers on that Social Security. I wish I had that cat by the front of his shirt. I went over in World War II and fought for everything that smart little cat is enjoying. How many programs would that little cat have if Hiro Hito was running this country? How many programs would that little cat have if uh, Hitler was running this country? I fought for everything he enjoys. I paid into that Social Security for 52 years, honey, and I don't back up for my check. I say, put it in my hand. I got it coming. I got it coming. Smart little cat. Them old geezers. I'd make him think, old geezer. I tell my boys, I say, you think I'm getting old? Come up here and try me. Come on. <laughs> Boy, I nearly wiped them out. You know, I throw my, I throw my, I throw my lesson open on Sunday morning. All the visitors can ask questions. And this Sunday morning, tall, strong fella in the back stood up and he said, Preacher, how about faith? Boy, I give him my own faith. And I started back on my lesson. He said, well, he said, Preacher, he said, what I really want to know is, he said, now I'm married, and I'm, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, he said, I am married, but he said, I'm not living with my wife, I'm living with this other lady. And he said, it's such a beautiful relationship. He said, am I going to hell? I said, J.W. Reed, I give him that scripture, read it. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters. Idolaters. Nor adulterers. Adulterers. Nor effeminate. Effeminate. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Abusers of themselves with mankind. That's homosexual. Nor thieves, thieves, nor covetous, the covetous, nor drunkards, the drunkards, nor revilers, the revilers nor extortioners, extortioners shall inherit shall the inherit kingdom of God. Inherit the kingdom of God. I said, you hear that? Yeah. Then he stepped out of the pew and started down the aisle. And I met him about twenty feet from the altar, and he stopped. I'm eyeball to eyeball with him. He said, Preacher, are you sending me to hell? I said, Your answer is in that order behind me. You fall in that order, repent of your sin, get right with God, you're going to be saved. If you don't, you're sending yourself to hell. He outweighed me 40 pounds. About that time, three or four of my boys start down there. I said, He said, Well, 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 he said, I just want to talk. I said, Okay, come on in my office at church. I said, We'll talk it on out. I got a piece of rebar about that long in my desk drawer. <laughs> we, we'd have a good conversation. A real good. Somebody said, would you hit him, Brother Westward? Will a bird fly? <laughs> if that cat's eyes had flickered one time, I'd have nailed him. Now, he'd have probably, he'd have probably eat my lunch, but I'd have got me a sandwich while he was doing it. I'll promise you that. Huh? 
Man, I have fun. I live dangerously. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I'm like a drunk on Saturday night. I could care less. The Word of God is true, honey. There ain't nothing else hardly in this world that's true. But that Word of God is true. It's right. It's right. Let me tell you something. If I'm wrong, that Bible is wrong. If that Bible is right, I'm right. I'm going to give you another one. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. What fellowship hath light with darkness? Woo! Woo! Marjorie says, Woo! My, my, my. Be ye not unequally Be yoked, not together not yoked together with, with unbelievers. unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Explain that to some people more carefully. Mm-hmm. What fellowship hath light with darkness? What communion hath light with darkness? What fellowship do we have with Trinitarians? Come on. Can I hit that John Maxwell? John Maxwell was the executive director of evangelism for the Wesleyan movement. I didn't say church. I said movement. Now, it is a known fact that the Wesleyans are dying all over the country. Selling their church buildings, closing them down. We bought their campground seven years ago in Kansas. They're going out of business. John Maxwell taught them how to have church growth, and they're going out of business. How stupid can you get? Hire the man to come and teach church growth to apostolics. Is he going to teach us the same kind of church growth he taught the Wesleyans? That's the most asinine stupidity that I ever heard in my life. That is not ignorance. Man told me one time, he said, you're ignorant. I said, thank you. That qualifies me to be an apostle. The Sanhedrin said they're unlearned and ignorant men. I said, that, that qualifies me to be an apostle, just to be an ignorant. But I said, there's hope for a man. If he's ignorant, that means he can still learn. But when you're stupid, you don't have, you don't have the ability to learn. I said, you're stupid. It is stupidity, asinine stupidity. It is funny. It is ludicrous. It is a joke. For John Maxwell, his church in San Diego spit him out. He's a 24-carat failure. Now, if you want to know the man that put the Wesleyan movement on the map. It's a man by the name of John Wesley. And John Wesley was a holiness preacher. Let me go a little deeper into this. Twenty, I come to Junction City 27 years ago. Three members voted me in. At that time, probably 20 years ago, those Wesleyan ladies looked just like my church. They did not cut their hair. There was no makeup on their face. They all wore dresses. You could not tell them from an apostolic. You mentioned talking in tongues and he'd blow their lid. But holiness. They lived holy and clean and righteous. And then, and then I saw painted lips, eyeshadow, jewelry, cut hair, breeches, and they went down the drain. What in the world is the matter with us? What in the world? Every, every. I can remember when the mission there. Hey, hey. When I first went to Houston in 1954, I, found, I got a job for Houston Belton Terminal fireman on a switch engine. And every night I climbed up in a cab of a different switch engine, worked with a different engineer. I climbed up there one night, and this old boy... He handed me a tract on drinking. I handed it back. I said, I don't drink. He switched a few cars, 
handed me one. I was smoking. I handed it back and said, don't smoke. He, uh, about the third track he gave me, he said, what church do you, he said, he said, does your wife cut her hair? I said, don't have one. But if she did, she wouldn't cut her hair. He said, do you go to movies? I said, no, sir. He said, do you watch television? I said, no, sir. He said, what church do you go to? I said, the United Pentecostal Church. I said, what church do you go to? He said, Missionary Baptist. Missionary Baptist. I watched them all go down the drain over the same thing. Why can't we get our stupid act together? Doesn't history teach us anything? Leaving the commandments out. Be not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. Keep the Trinitarians out of your pulpit. That is spiritual adultery. Spiritual adultery. Keep the Trinitarians out of your pulpit. That is the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam. Read, read, read. And what concord hath Christ what with Belial? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What part hath he that believeth with an infidel? I don't want to get started on our, our whoremongering, queer-loving, Abortion loving, pot smoking, draft dodging, president. What fellowship hath light with darkness? How could anybody fellowship that cat? They've never read this. Wherefore? Get down to verse 17. Wherefore? Wherefore come, come out from, from among them, them and, and be a separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. I receive you. And we'll be a father I'll unto be a you. Father to you. And ye shall be my You're sons be and my daughters. Oh my God. Saith the Lord God. Having Almighty. therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of, of the flesh, flesh and, and spirit, spirit perfecting holiness in, in the fear of God. Of God. Yeah. You know, I'm not running for office, got one more now and I need. Got one more now than I want. I've had it 23 years. Didn't want it when they done it to me. Didn't want it. 23 years with an office that I didn't want. My God, don't ever reach for an office. Let me tell you how it is. If things go right, there's 25 preachers will take the credit. If it goes wrong, there's 25 fingers pointing right at you. You're a dartboard. You've got to have the mind of a scholar and the heart of a child and the height of a rhinoceros. I said the mind of a scholar and the heart of a child and the hide of a rhinoceros. i got to get on. i got to get on. My God, I... It's amazing to me how educated men can be so as stupid. I mean asinine stupidity. And you can't talk to them. They got a mindset. I told there was a little cat come in my church one time. He said, behind my back, he said, Brother Westberg just don't know who he's talking to. I called, I said, hey you... I said, whoever told you you was tough lied to you. Hear me? <laughs> Some of them people, somebody told them they're smart. They lied to them. Wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Oh, God. Let's go on. Let's go on. Hebrews chapter 6. Now, here is a portion of Scripture I never understood. 
Hold that. Give me Second Thessalonians 2 and 15. This is a commandment. This is a commandment now. Second Thessalonians 2 and 15. Read, 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 Brother Joe. Second Thessalonians 2 and 15. This is a commandment there, now. Therefore, brethren. Therefore, brethren. Stand fast. Stand fast. And hold the tradition. And hold that tradition. Which ye have been taught. Which you've been taught. Whether by word. Whether by my mouth. Or our epistle. Or my letters that I wrote to you. Stand fast and hold that tradition. Right. I didn't write all of it down in the letter to the churches. I give some of it to you with my mouth. But he said, hold fast. Hold fast to that tradition. You better hold fast to the tradition that you have been taught. Somebody said that's tradition. You better believe it's tradition, but it's right. It's right. It's right. right. Stand fast and hold that tradition that you've been taught, whether by my epistle or my mouth. Both of them's right. Now, now give me that other one now. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, Therefore leaving, leaving the principles, principles of the doctrine of Christ. Of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Now, some folks think that means turn your back on Acts 2.38 and walk off and leave it. No. So therefore, leaving the principles, when the principles are firmly established, and you've got a foundation to build on, go to building on it and move on. Read, read, read. Now laying again the foundation of repentance. Don't lay again the foundation of repentance. Not laying, yeah, from dead works. Dead works. And of faith toward God. Faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptisms. He mentions doctrine in two scriptures there. The doctrine of baptisms. And of laying on of hands. And laying on of hands. And of resurrection of the dead. Resurrection of the dead. And of eternal judgment. And of eternal judgment. And this will we do and if God permit. We will do if God permits. For, for it is it impossible. It is impossible. I, I thought this one time. I thought this uh, 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 applied to the sinner. And I thought, my God, a backslider will never make it back to God. For it is impossible. For those who were once enlightened. For those who were once enlightened. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. Tasted of the heavenly gift. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have tasted the good word of God. Tasted the good word of God. And the powers of the world powers to come. Powers of the world to come. If it's they, not talking about the sinner. It's talking about the doctrine. When you leave this doctrine, honey. This firmly established apostolic doctrine. When you leave leave that, it is impossible for you to come back and you leave this doctrine. It is impossible for you to come back. Read it again. For it is impossible. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Once enlightened. Once knew the the oneness of the Godhead. Once knew the water baptism. They were enlightened. Right. Read, read. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. Tasted of the heavenly gift. And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have tasted the good word of God. Tasted the good word of God. And the powers of the world to come. Powers of the word to come. If they shall fall away. If they fall away from this doctrine. Read. To renew them again. They're not coming back. They can't renew it to repentance. Those that have gone, let them go. They ain't coming back. It is impossible for them to come back. Why? Read on. Seeing they crucified to themselves they the Son of God afresh. Crucified Jesus over again. Put him to an open shame. And put him to an open shame. Anybody that ever believed Acts 2.38 and the oneness of the Godhead and water baptism in Jesus' name, if you ever fall away, it is impossible. Because they have crucified the Lord over again and put Him to an open shame, Honey, Jesus died for this doctrine. He died for this doctrine. And when you leave it, you have crucified the Lord over again. You have put Him to an open shame and you have wiped your feet on the blood 
of Jesus Christ. Read on. For the earth which drinketh in the rain oh, that cometh God. oft upon it. My God, that's enough. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died, died without, without mercy, mercy under two, two or, three or three witnesses. witnesses. Read, read, read. Of how much sore punishment how much suppose ye. Sore punishment suppose ye. Shall he be thought worthy. Be thought worthy. Who hath trodden underfoot trodden the Son of God. Underfoot the Son of God. And hath counted the blood of the covenant. Counted the blood of the covenant. Wherewith he was sanctified, sanctified an, an unholy, unholy thing, thing. And hath done despite. Done despite. Unto the spirit of the grace. the spirit of grace. When you leave this doctrine, honey, you've done it all. You will never come back. Verse 25. See that ye refuse not. 12.25. See that ye refuse not. See that ye refuse not him that, that speaketh. speaketh from heaven. He's speaking through the pen of the prophet. He's speaking through the mouth of the apostle. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh from heaven. Let me tell you something. When an anointed preacher opens his mouth, you better listen. I said, when a God-fearing anointed preacher opens his mouth, you better listen. Read, read, read. For if they escape not, they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape who, if we turn away from him, him that speaketh speaketh from heaven. From heaven. My God, my God. I've watched him. I've watched him. I gotta told you about this family. Sweet, that girl could sing like Mahalia Jackson. That girl could sing. Oh God, could she sing? My office in the old building was right next to the ladies' prayer room. On Sunday afternoon, I was always down there. Five thirty. Church began at seven. I prayed and sought God an hour and a half. Never was a Sunday I didn't walk in. I heard that woman praying. I'm not talking about God bless this hamburger and now I lay me down to sleep. That woman would be in deep travail. It was coming out of her innermost being. It was pouring out of her. That woman had a walk with God. She had a walk with God. She could step to a pulpit and lift her voice, and the church was enthralled because there was power, power in that woman's voice. I'll never forget her singing, coming up the rough side of the mountain. She'd make you weep. She'd make you shout. I saw that woman turn into a backbiting reprobate she's going to a church of God in Christ in another city reprobate hates me hates my wife hates the church she has turned from this doctrine she will never be back I've seen godly men that I love the one I was talking to you about this afternoon, Brother Burgess, I love that man. Oh, did he have a ministry. I'll never forget one time he preached on the rice field and them big wells bringing that water up out of the ground, flooding the field and the little old rice plant coming up out of that water, coming up out of that Holy Ghost water. Oh, God, that man could preach with power. Donald Heyman called me out there to Colorado to come preach in the afternoon, and this man was preaching at night. It was sick, Brother Hare. Something had happened to the man. Something had happened to him. Later on, I loved the man. I loved him. Later on, going down the road, I put one of his tapes in. I sat there and wept when I thought of what he used to be. 
But oh, oh, he'll never, he'll never be back. I love the man. I love him. I love him. I love him. But he'll never be back. My God, let's all stand. If you know this apostolic truth, you better hold it close to your bosom. You better hug this doctrine close to your bosom. You better pull it in close and love it with everything you got. Lady, help your husband preach holiness. My God have mercy. It's the women that's taken us down the road. And gutless men that don't have guts enough to set their house in order. They ought to hand in the card. You straighten your wife out, you might save her. If you don't, both of you are going down the drain. You see, when you reach my age, you can tell the truth. You don't have to worry about nothing. I ain't running for any office. I don't care whether you like me or not. It's your problem. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you like it, fine. If you don't, I'm still going to tell you the truth. Every head bowed. I can't close a service without an altar invitation. If you love this truth, and you're going to defend this truth with every breath that's in your body. I said, if you love this truth, if you're going to defend this truth with every breath that's in your body, come down and stand in front of this altar tonight. Brother Urshan said to me one time, Brother Westbrook, he said, I believe you'd die for what you believe. I don't know whether I would or not. I hope that I would. My God, you leave this. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. There's nothing left anywhere when you leave this. Let's raise our hands and recommit ourselves to this apostolic doctrine. The commandments of the Lord, the New Testament commandments. Let's commit ourselves to God. Let's raise our voices tonight. Don't be inhibited. Let it roll out of you. Come on.